everyone, and welcome to Publish Me, Punish Me, a comedy series that's examining deal practices within the games industry with me, your host, Ava Carr. And me, Sun M, the studio director of Perfect Garbage. Each episode, we'll dive into indie publishers, crowdfunding deals, equity, and more. So whether it's the good, the bad, or just plain yikes, we're going to look at it all. If you're interested in discussions about the design and business of video games, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to our channel below. But you know what we're especially going to look at today? Funds. I actually have the answer today. Yeah. Funds. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. I'm proud of you too. (laughs) What are funds? Like, uh, what are actually funds? Funds are ways of gaining sums of money through means. (laughs) Thanks, Oxford Dictionary. (laughs) (laughs) Let me look at the dictionary. Funds are money. I'm going to be honest. I, I hate explaining things without context. Uh, Ava, how would you do a fund? <laughs> Clearly, you're more articulate. To me, a fund is strangely nebulous because there are so many different types of funds. So you can't like, describe it either. No, that's not true. Oh, I can man. totally describe it. It's just a place where you get funding. Like it, the funds equals a pool of money. That's what it is to me. Why funds I are a pool of money. Needlessly. <laughs> I feel... Like I've been punished <laughs> so early That's on in this episode. The <laughs> That's the, that is the point of this show. Song. All right. If funds are just pools of money that which you can apply for, which is literally what I said earlier, <laughs> <laughs> then, then how in games, uh, what's the difference between getting funds? With funds, both parties have to have some sort of uh, shared monetary gain whereas a grant for example there's only a dollar amount that's uh that's awarded and then there's no return by any means the idea is a fund will often co-own something whether it is a part of a studio or a small minority stake in a studio Mm -hmm. or uh sometimes we see ip if it's project based i think that you kind of emphasizing the importance of a return in some way whether or not it means Mm -hmm. ip ownership whether that means revenue split or whatever way that we want to handle it the return is important and i think it's a big factor in deciding what funds to go to the three most important parts then are that there's return ownership, and also how it's different from a publisher oftentimes too is decoupling the funding from the services or the money from the services. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's definitely another big difference. Funds are a great source for developers to building their studio, getting access to sums of money for certain reasons in the same way that any deal is. Like I'm not shied away from it the same way I'm not shied away from publishing deals, platform deals, equity deals. I feel like they all follow the same pattern in which you're getting some money and getting, and you're going to have to provide a return on said money in some way. However, that is described varies based on the deal terms, but that's always been the same. Sounds like we're really differentiating, differentiating funds from publishers and platform deals. Yeah, I think right now, at least within the current ecosystem, it's very clear that uh, funds originated at least in the equity space and are now definitely also being used in a way uh, to describe project-based financing too, but stripped of services. Um, so that's something that I've seen a lot uh, over the last couple of years. I I personally think that they're not bad, uh, but I, I kind of want to hear the, the stories that are coming up and or I want to hear, um, you know, some details about how they actually work and how they actually work in practice. I know I have a story. It's, it's, it's a little spicy. Well, mine, based on the way we described funds, might actually not be the perfect example. I'm still happy to go through it, but it is, it is acquiring sums of money from it, folks in which you require a return. Did you both bring spicy takes? I think no, we both brought spicy takes. Mine, mine, <laughs> that's yeah, spicy. it's a potluck of spicy takes. <laughs> Mine is definitely more of a neutral, it is life take. Um, because the way I approached it is what I got from funding is when the person that I've talked to in their studio, they crowdfunded. Because if you really look at a kickstarting crowdfunding Indiegogo, anything that requires a return. So the reason I'm focusing on kickstarting or Patreon, for example, is that there is a guaranteed return. It might not, it's not money. So 
that's kind of why I kept poking like, so it yeah. has to be a money return. Uh, but it, there is a promise being made to quote unquote investors, right? Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. So my story was about crowdfunding. I think that's a, a nuanced way of talking about it. Why don't we just go for it? You make me feel so articulate and nuanced. <laughs> I'm just bringing in the nuance to this discussion, really looking at it a magnifying glass. So the studio that I talked to wanted to raise funds, haha, for their upcoming game project. Now, I'm actually going to talk about how I personally think that finding funding sources is not so open-ended, even if they are more available now in this space that we work in. To know where to go for funding, to know who to ask for for funding, um, to kind of develop those deals and those networkings and those kind of like um, relationships with those who can provide funding, I think is difficult if you're new. Um, you really need to be networking. You really need to be talking to folks. You really be needing to understand kind of like how this space works and where money moves. And I don't think that's something you get um, usually in your first year of development, unless you're a vet and have already experienced this network. So sometimes funding is a little, I don't want to say gatekeeped, but it's a little mm. non-accessible, especially if you're new. So after this new team kind of exhausted their, you know, personal resources, asking around, trying to get any folks to bite, just like how funding requires some level of return. A lot of funds also don't risk it, let's say with first games. But just from their experience, what they talked about is that as they're producing their first game, they have no history of being uh, developers prior, no shipped games prior. It was difficult then for them to acquire any source of funding. So what do they do? They turned into funding they can bring with their own hands. <laughs> Uh, which is Kickstarter. They built a small prototype and they launched a Kickstarter. They promoted it really, really well. They actively, they were active on social media. They made a trailer. They had a prototype. I say prototype instead of demo because it wasn't a fully fleshed demo. It was definitely more of a prototype. And they brought interest into their game and which led to the Kickstarter being successful. A couple of things to note though is one, when I mentioned crowdfunding, I mentioned that they had promised these backers rewards with the game. So um, there is a deal being made, even though it is to a thousand people as opposed to yeah. a group, there is a promise of a product in the return. Uh, whether we call that pre-sales or whatever, I would argue because they dis- they distinguished this was for development funds that every backer kind of should have known what they were getting into going into it, right? If people uh, read. If Which people we'll read. Say, yeah, yeah, people read. <laughs> oh, <laughs> anyway. Moving forward, how does this get to funding? They received the amount of money that they need. Um, they asked for a certain amount. They raised over that amount, but they did under ask. So they received that certain money from the Kickstarter. They at this place where they're developing now a more fleshed out demo, and they start actively looking now for funding sources post Kickstarter. Here's where it gets hairy. Kickstarting can always be a weird place for indie games because you've technically done pre-sales to fund your game. As they were talking to certain funding sources, they actually did get quite a few deals, but there was one issue that tended to surround the deals, which was the Kickstarter backers. For the Kickstarter, they raised around $100,000. They needed about double that to Mm -hmm. make the game and a funding Mm -hmm. source offered to finish the other $100,000. Sure. The only issue is that they had is that they wanted the return from including the Kickstarter backers, which is difficult because that money is already in the development fund, right? Mm -hmm. But that also Mm -hmm. to them, the funding source counts as Mm pre-sales. So that means that the studio upon release would have to go in the red to pay back. Yeah, you're shaking your head already Mm -hmm. um, to pay back what is initially counted by the fund source as pre-sales. What are your questions? What are, what boggles your mind? What stimulates the cells? I have no questions. I just don't want it. <laughs> like, All right. Uh, <laughs> I hear I, the sound effects already. Yeah, I me. mean, it's, it's, yeah. it's one thing uh, to back a team or to uh, become some sort of in, like investor or backer prior to a Kickstarter. And then you're kind of like going in it together, right? Like you've already, like you're, you're helping to raise during that Kickstarter campaign. Mm-hmm. Like that actually sounds really nice to have like a couple of extra folks who are uh, supporting and, and continuing to get the word out with the idea around finishing funds which 
uh, to me, that's where publishers really kind of come in with mm-hmm. not only money and also services. It's wrong to take funding that has already been raised because while I understand that it is pre-sales, um, depending on the Kickstarter, if the developer had said that this is for development during the prototype phase or it's development for like early up until early alpha or whatever that is, uh, that is still raising for development funds and it was their intent to use it as development funds and therefore it makes it much harder to say that these are a part of sales looking at it from the other perspective I mean yes they are in a way sales because Kickstarter crowdfunding you have to promise a copy of the game but uh, personally if I were the developer I would sit down and say no these are development funds I understand that you see them as pre-sales and I get it because of the the, the crowdfunding platform, but that's not how we see it. And so if it doesn't make sense for you uh, to see these as development dollars, then that would be a different partner. Like it's, it's just a no, because the team sees it as development funds. The funder is, sees it as revenue and they just have a mismatch on, on their view of that pool of money. So I personally think that Um, the developer should choose what their original intent was and find a funder who is actually going to back in a way that makes sense for them. Well, ultimately, uh, Ava, you are definitely on the right side of history because they also said no, ultimately, to that funding source. Um, They were in a tight position. And at the time, Kickstarter wasn't actually well understood the way it is now. Okay. Um, so they couldn't convince the funding source that technically they weren't counting this as pre-sales, even though they were. And so due to that, they ultimately decided, hey, we've raised this much money on Kickstarter. Why don't we release the game to the size that we can with mm-hmm. what we've made on Kickstarter? Thankfully, they didn't do my mistake, which was pitching for too long. Um, <sighs> they managed to, they made this decision pretty quickly and ultimately ended up releasing a short, but a bit well liked uh, game. Well, good on them. Um, It seems like it turned out happy. And uh, I I think it's nice that they stuck to what their original goal was. They got the game out and their funders, meaning like all of the backers on Kickstarter were happy and they didn't go into debt or anything of sorts. I'd count it as a win if they actually, you know, because they shipped the game, like shipping the game is honest to God like one of the most important things anyways right so uh as long as they got it out and they got it shipped that's uh that's a win to me so ultimately a okay definitely a struggle i can imagine it being hard but it does this deal uh does showcase that funding sources do require sometimes certain terms Mm -hmm. uh that they are strict on just like any deal a publishing deal or a platform deal could and it's important that you know these terms while going into that fund and being able to understand how to negotiate certain outs if it's required. Well, my story isn't quite as wholesome. I'm ready. I'm ready to be hurt. (laughs) I'm ready to be destroyed (laughs) in my life. So I have dubbed this one, sharing IP isn't so bad. Um, (laughs) (laughs) What's happening? Okay, okay. So we're a mid-sized studio um, and also an established team with multiple games under our belt. So over the years, we've worked with publishing partners and also platforms to get our games out to players and have slowly been building our audience. Good on you. We were curious about funds and how they all work since it seems to be the hot new thing. After talking to a bunch of them, our team noticed that they were all real different, which was quite honestly confusing. Some were equity, others were grants, a few were agents, (laughs) but a couple had been doing this IP sharing thing. So after doing some digging, we realized that we wanted to look into it more and landed on a deal worth talking about with the whole team. So the deal that was on the table was $1 million for 30% ownership of all sales, earning 80-20 up to $1 million. So that's 80-20 on the fund side, up Mm -hmm. to $1 million. Uh, And then a flat 30% in perpetuity. Forever. You know how I feel about forever. Most marriages aren't forever. So let's talk about that. Um, (laughs) I immediately hate this deal. I know it's the way you're talking means that it's probably not that bad. Like 
you imply that there's some optimism there. Imagine <laughs> I'm a shadowy figure with an obscene amount of money at my disposal. That's mm-hmm. how I imagine you all. Yes, that's <laughs> how I imagine you Call always. me Seto Kaiba. And <laughs> as I approach your team and I say, hey, I can hey. provide you a cool, crisp million dollar bill. <laughs> One million dollar bill. <laughs> million dollar bill i want Just one of those right in my wallet like here it is one million dollars and instead i will get 80 percent revenue split until i reach a mill so make my return exact which is actually mm-hmm. not the end of the world because mm-hmm. i usually i'm used to two times return so mm-hmm. hearing that is pretty solid but the 80 20 is nuts you will make nothing for like a long period of time and then after that I want to own 30% of all revenue, I'm assuming, because you're talking about IP share, involving this IP, mm-hmm. too. So 30% forever of this game. But also, mm-hmm. if you make another game, sequel, automatically, there's a discussion to be had because of the IP share. So this deal is a nightmare. Literally, <laughs> it's evil. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, my gosh. I'm sure it's not that bad. But... Uh, I there's a lot of flags that I don't like. I don't like the 30% perpetuity. I don't like the 80-20 split. I feel like that puts the devs in a really weird, no, almost no income position for launch. Yeah, but see, the team also is a mid-sized studio already, right? Mm. So I, I keep coming back to like, oh, so this fund definitely looks for established studios, teams that are, are already doing this kind of work with multiple games. So the risk is minimized. Uh, but they, they're totally cool with people working with a publisher. They're totally cool with a bunch of different outcomes. Um, but this million is to, to get that entire project up and, off, and like off the ground. I mean, ultimately, we can never know what their like, work conditions are and what they've planned. Because like yeah. you said, to them, this could have been a perfect deal. From a complete outside perspective with no yeah. context of the inner working of the studio, I'm full punish me on this deal i'm like red flagging it i don't like it <laughs> you don't like it i think it's too little money for that much of a split mm-hmm. for ip forever yeah it's the forever i would have i would have been more lenient on the 80 20 if they were like 80 20 first round then reverse second yeah. round and then call it a day uh yeah but the 30 forever me for only a mil that you're going to pay back immediately mm-hmm, and there's nothing mm-hmm. else coming. There's no publishing. There's no marketing help. There's no porting help. There's no nothing. No. no. Mm-hmm. So, so the verdict is punish me. You do not want this deal. I don't, I really don't. I, but like the other part of me is like, there's gotta be a reason. There's gotta be a reason. They didn't think this was a bad deal. What am I missing? <laughs> Let's talk about outcomes. Yeah. They said this, we've never worked with them before. They seem okay. So we said, yes. Let's see how this goes. I'm crossing my fingers. <laughs> That's all I got. Well, that <laughs> is going to haunt me for the rest of my life. <laughs> By the time this episode comes out, hopefully they can fill us in on whether or not it's as bad as I think it is. <laughs> like tears rolling down my cheek. I honestly knock on what I hope it is a good deal. I hope that <laughs> this funder provides lots of resources, things like that. This is going to sound awful if you're not in games, but I've learned that a mill isn't a lot for a mid-sized studio. It's not a lot. If you're paying everyone a good wage and you're paying everyone, especially for where they're located, a good wage, um, that mill can go away in two years of development time, sometimes less, depending on what we're arguing is mid-sized. Yeah, to me, mid-sized is like 30 to 50. If you have 40 people and you get a mill, that's 25K per person for a year. That's also not including like taxes right so and you have to save a third for taxes so forget that like so all i'm thinking about is 40 people mid-sized i'm being generous with the number 25k per person one mil to develop it and now you owe the first wave of revenue of your game for it that's harsh for me i feel like that's really hard Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. maybe they have other sources that support the team on a constant salary where that kind of deal for a project-based ip is not that like far out i i could see this kind of working i i feel like what you were saying son like i would personally push back on 80 20 i think it's 
freaking 50 50 the whole way in like you put in like you put in the money i will put in the work we've already done this and we share in it but i actually have majority stake in the long tail share like i kind of am open to it because it has nothing to do with my studio like and other future ip that i make you know what i mean like it it just really depends on the person and what they want to do um and also maybe even the longevity of the studio or what they what their goals are and what they want to do. If it was a 50-50, I actually think I'd be a lot more agreeable because it's so IP locked and project locked rather than yeah. equity locked. But I think because I keep placing the perspective of sometimes studios, at, at least in the indie stage, live by revenue by gain. And so if you don't have a fail safe with that kind of deal, you might all not get enough income to survive the yeah. following year after the release. And I'm always just so aware of that, that I'm like, yeah. 80, 20 is rough. There's the phase of your, when you're in a project-based financing like mindset, as you're closing and shipping, and maybe even before this, you've already been pitching your, your second, third, fourth Mm -hmm. game, right? Like, so as you're kind of headed towards that late beta phase, you're already thinking about a new project that you're going to start pitching basically as soon as. Yeah. Yeah. And so the, it it becomes a question of like, how do you do, how do you pivot? Yeah. Yeah. Like, how do you do this? So I, I don't know. I could see it working. I could see it working and I can see again, a scenario in which like, if you choose these types of funding, Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's equity, like an equity fund or a project-based fund, like I, I could see both working, but depending on who you are, it's just like another, it's like another tool in your toolkit. Right. Exactly. Um, and I like that, uh, between both different types of funds, it's very clear oftentimes that they'll allow or actually encourage you to work with like a platform partner or a publishing partner for additional distribution. And those teams are actually specialized to do that. As for this deal in particular, 80, 20 is not kosher. I'm not cool with that. I believe that I would do 50, 50, maybe 20 flat or 25 flat 50 50 25 I can I can see it I can see it a lot more yeah but this one no my rule of thumb always no matter what the deal is that the developer needs to be comfortable with that split even if it's in perpetuity that they can raise enough money to support the pitching phase of their next game the, yeah. at least the development of a prototype of their next game uh anything like that so as long as that co- income weighs which is why I'm like maybe if this is in like the in a bigger space than I know it is, it could it yeah. could easily make back its mill, and I don't know it. Hope they are rich and successful, and they tell us what happened. Yes, I want to hear it. I want to hear it. <laughs> so thank you, wonderful people, for joining us on this episode of Publish Me, Punish Me. I hope you learned something, especially about funds, because boy, did I do. <laughs> boy, and did you do. <laughs> If you have a deal that you want us to discuss, um, please feel free to click the Google form down below and send it our way. All of these deals are anonymous. You can describe as little or as much as you want, and we will deep dive and kind of discuss what our pros and cons of these deals is and whether or not we would publish it or punish it. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed the episode. If you want to connect with our community and continue the conversation on this episode, you can join us on discord.gg backslash hey glitch. And uh, we'll see you next time. I don't know how to tell y'all that we just see each other when we record these episodes. So I don't think I'm seeing anybody. No. But you'll be seeing me. <laughs> you'll be seeing you'll me. You'll be seeing me. Yeah. <laughs>